What's up, everybody? This is Dr. Nick with Leverage Media, and welcome to another episode of Path to a Million Podcast. Uh, don't forget, there is a live Q&A uh, uh, today, Sunday, the 29th at 5.30 on all things Paycheck Protection Program. Um, this one is the one that everybody has been asking about. This is the most popular question. This is the most confusing. Um, I... I promise you that we will not have a good answer at the end of this video, but this will give you some context on what the law says. So this is reading straight from the bill. So this is based on, this is a, an ex, this is called exemption for rehires, meaning they've been laid off. How are we, uh, do we have to bring them back on to get the, the paycheck uh, or the, the, the loan forgiveness? So here's what it says. In general, in a circumstance described in subparagraph B, which I'll read in a second, the amount of loan forgiveness under this section shall be determined without regard to a reduction in the number of full-time equivalent employees of an eligible of an eligible recipient or a reduction in the salary of one or more employees of the eligible recipient, meaning you as applicable during the period beginning on February 15, 2020 and ending on the date that is 30 days after the date of enactment of this act. So the date of enactment uh, was the 27th. So that would mean uh, April 27th. Ooh, that, that's tough. That is not, hold on a second. Let me go reread re that again. In general, in a circumstance described in subparagraph B, the amount of loan forgiveness under this section shall be determined without regard to a reduction in the number of full-time equivalent employees uh, of an eligible recipient or a reduction in the salary of one or more employees of the eligible recipient as applicable during the period beginning on February 15th and ending on the date that is 30 days after the date of enactment of this act. So that'd be April 27th. So it seems like what it's saying is that from February 15th to April 27th that the amount of loan forgiveness under this section shall be determined. So they're gonna determine how much loan forgiveness you get without regard to a reduction in the number of full-time equivalent employees uh, of an eligible recipient or a reduction in the salary of one or more employees. Because remember the, the reduction in the salary is based off of each individual employee of one or more employees of the eligible recipient as applicable during the period beginning on February 15th going through 427. All right, the paragraph B, that, or the subparagraph B that they talked about, circumstances. A circumstance described in this, excuse me, a circumstance des described in this subparagraph is a circumstance in which one, during the period beginning on February 15, 2020, and ending on, a, on the date that is 30 days after the date of enactment of this act, there is a reduction as compared to February 15, 2020, in the number of full-time equivalent employees of an eligible recipient. All right, let me read that again. Um, a, circumstance, a circumstance described in this subparagraph, so this is what, uh, what they were talking about was, in a circumstance described in subparagraph B, which I'm about to describe, the amount of loan forgiveness under this section shall be determined without regard to a reduction in the number of full-time equivalent employees of an eligible recipient or a reduction in the salary of one or more employees. All right, so let's go to the circumstances. During the period beginning February 15th and ending on the date that is 30 days after the date of the enactment of this act, there is a reduction as compared. So as like February 14th, whatever number of full-time employees you had, um, I don't think your loan forgiveness will be affected if your number of, it seems like if you get your number back to where it was February 14th, 2020 by April 27th, April 27th, 2020, which is 30 days after the act was the, and I think it's, I, I would imagine that the date that it actually is signed into law is the date that it's enacted. So I'm assuming that's going to be um, April 27th. Um, 
All right, let me look. So number one is during the period beginning on February 15th and ending on the date that is 30 days after the date of the enactment of this act, there is a reduction as compared to February 15th, 2020 in the number of full-time equivalent employees of an eligible recipient. So the way I'm reading this is that you have an exception. You will not be dinged on decreasing your headcount from February 15th to April 27th relative to February 14th, as long as it's back by April 27th, it sounds like. The circumstance number two, not later, okay, this is where I've seen this, not later than June 30th, 2020, the eligible employer has eliminated the reduction in the number of full-time equivalent employees, okay? I don't know why that is different than the first one. Um, that makes no sense. I don't know why they would have circumstance one is like February 15th to uh, April 27th. And the second one is no later than June 30th, 2020. The eligible, the eligible employer has eliminated the reduction in the number of full-time equivalent employees, meaning they brought back the same number of full-time equivalent employees by June 30th. All right, two, in which one, let's see, during the period beginning on February 15, 2020 and ending on the date that is 30 days after the date of enactment of this act, there is a reduction as compared to February 15, 2020 in the salary or wages of one or more employees of the eligible recipient and not later, not later than June 30th, 2020, the eligible employer has eliminated the reduction in the salary or wages of such employees. Or three, in which the events described in clause one and two occur. All right. Um, then after that, it says exemptions. The administrator and the secretary of the treasury may describe regulations granting de minimis exemptions from the requirements under this subsection. So here's, here's one thing that I think may happen. They, um, uh, with the first stimulus bill, they, um, uh, it was like the paid sick leave and the family uh, medical leave act. They like juiced it up for anybody that had to stay home because their kid's school was shut or they had to uh, self isolate or quarantine. So when they did that, um, they were giving tax credits to employers that were forced to uh, give the sick leave and because they had to give like up to two weeks and then maybe like up to 12 weeks of the Family Medical Leave Act. But they, I, I think they gave exemptions to anybody under 50 employees. So this next paragraph that says exemptions, the administrator and the secretary of the treasury may prescribe regulations granting de minimis exemptions, which I means I think means like if you're under this amount, you may be exempt from the requirements under this subsection. Um, so that, after, after I read all of that and you listened to me think, think it through, I still am not 100% sure what that would allow you to do in terms of uh, laying people, like putting people onto unemployment, bringing them back, uh, because it sounds like, I'm just gonna like, just kind of like look through this myself instead of reading it out loud real quick. Um, during in which, see each time, all right, so they basically give you two circumstances for, for, each, um, uh, for each situation. They give you two circumstances for the, uh, the headcount and two circumstances for the payroll of each individual employee not dropping below 25%. So in each one of the circumstances, they're basically the same circumstance, but one says uh, starting February 15th and ending on the date that is 30 days after the date of enactment of this act. And then the other one, and then the other circumstance in both situations says not later than June 30th. So I don't know if that means you'd have to be back to your, your uh, full-time equivalent employee number um, by April 27th, or if it means by June 30th, because it, it says and, it says, it says the February 15th uh, and ending on the date that is 30 days after the date of the enactment of this act. So that would be the April 27th. But then at the end of that circumstance, it says and, not later than June 30th. So maybe they're just putting that into place. Oh, you know what? That, Oh, because this is the Senate bill that I'm reading. That's what it is. If it would have gotten hung up in the House or the president wouldn't have signed it right away, 
I think they were putting that in place to make June 30th because they were, oh, okay, now this is making some more sense. So hopefully all you guys stayed till this point. Um, so January, uh, the it's retroactive to February 15th. The way the bill was written, it was retroactive to, J to February 15th. As long as it passed before like June 30th, they knew that it was gonna be fine to where people could just re retroactively get loan forgiveness on that. So that makes more sense. The reason why it says and I think is the, um, the June 30th date was in there is like a backstop if it took a long time in the house. I have a feeling that this first circumstance is what is going to actually matter. During the period beginning on February 15th and ending on the date that this, because they didn't know when the date, when the act was gonna be enacted. And so they wanted to get people back on the payroll. Okay, so I've been reading, everything that I've been reading has been using this June 30th date. I think they're reading this wrong. I think that they're gonna have, I think that you're gonna have to have people back on the payroll by April 27th, um, because this Senate bill did not know when the act was gonna be enacted, um, and they put June 30th in because that was the end of the covered period. So if I had to guess, and again, this is just, you're reading along with me. If I had to guess, this means that whoever you had, however many people you had on February 15th, however much payroll you had on February 15th, by April 27th, you're gonna need to be back at 100%, if you already did lay those people off. So I think that that could, uh, I think as long as you do it by April 27th, seems like that would not affect your, your loan forgiveness amount. Um, so if you got the money, I'm trying to think, what's today that, today's March, like today's like March. So I think you could pro, I think you might be able to like get the money go back in time to February 15th, pay the covered categories, like say you've been paying payroll for the last month and a half and you did not get a disaster loan to pay for that in that time, you could go back to February 15th, run it through April 15th, use the money for the payroll that you've incurred in that time and the rent and the utilities and da 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 da, and as long as you reemploy them by April 27th, I think you, I don't know if that would affect your loan forgiveness amount. So even if you, yeah, the problem is I don't know if you'd have enough stuff to even pay if you didn't have payroll. Like if you laid people off, you'd get, you, you would only be able to get reimbursed for what you actually could prove that you paid in payroll. So if you have people on unemployment, they, uh, you're, you're, you're limiting the, the amount that you can be paying out in payroll to cover that, uh, to be in a covered category. Cause like most people's rent and utilities and like interest on, on loans isn't going to be enough to like use up all of this money. Um, so payroll is going to be the thing. I think the thing that's going to be the trickiest for people is, To, the, the way I'm reading this, it sounds like if you get everybody back in, in place before April 27th, like if you have people on unemployment now and you leave them on unemployment until say like uh, April 20th and then you bring everybody back, you get the loan and then you have your, you have your team back together and now you have eight weeks from April 20th, which would be uh, May 20th and then June 20th, I think you probably... I think you'd probably be, you would not get your loan forgiveness hit because you'd have everybody back, you'd be paying the money to the covered categories and you'd have everybody back in place before the, the April 27th deadline. Um, I think the June 30th deadline is not a thing anymore now that they have an actual date. I think that was more of a backstop. Um, so yeah, I think my, 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 uh, my thought process on this though is if you, I would not want my team going on to unemployment because unemployment is going to, uh, because of this bill, the federal government's adding $600 a week onto the state unemployment. So if, you know, if you've got a 30,000, 35, $40,000 employee, they're probably either going to make a hundred percent. Cause I don't think there's anything in the bill that says if, if that $600 puts you over what you already make, 
they could stay on that unemployment for four for four months at least, or the four months is the extra six hundred bucks. But they're they're adding thirteen weeks onto the back end of your state's unemployment uh, weeks, so that ranges anywhere from twelve to twenty eight. So the I, the reason I don't want anybody to go on to unemployment on my team is because a I want to keep everybody together and we want to keep working and I'm hoping that we'll be able to be back and open in eight weeks. Um, and I'm just trying, I'm not like trying to make money on the pay, paycheck stuff. I'm just trying to keep everybody together. But if they go onto unemployment and one of them says, oh, you know what? Unemployment's pretty sweet. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to listen to you. Um, you know, I'll let you know when it runs out. If they do that and you don't have your team back together, then I think that would probably uh, hit you, especially if it's a full-time employee, that hits against your, um, your, uh, your head count. And so that's the, that's the, that's the trick. Um, that is, there is, this is a very gray area and you are going to have to really understand this so that you can make the best decision for you and for your business. Um, I know people are still going to ask me like, what should I do? I laid this person off and like, blah, blah, blah. I think the only way that you're super safe is if you just like keep everybody together and you pay them a hundred percent and you get, my thing is the reason why you want to do that is because who knows if this money is going to be gone in eight weeks. Who knows if they're going to re-up it? Or who knows if you're, if you're the first person, like say you were the first person that got it. You ran through the eight weeks, your eight weeks is up, and you still can't go back to work, and the economy is still in like a disaster. Who says that they're not going to say, okay, you can have another eight weeks now. But if you try to get cute and wait until April 20th, you know, maybe you miss out on that. You know, so I think my thing is, is like, I've said it before, uh, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Like, I think you should be going... You should just try to keep everybody together right now. There's lots of reasons to just keep keep exactly what you were doing before. Try to get people back on payroll and do it right now. That's what I'm going to do. I don't know if that's best for you, but I just think that there are too many unknowns. It's not like this is a tornado that they've dealt with a hundred times. It's not like it's a it's a uh, you know some kind of natural disaster. It's a it's a pandemic that they have never dealt with in this kind of economy. So you have no idea what they're going to do in eight weeks and 12 weeks at the end of June 30th. Who knows? So I, to me, I don't know if, if it's worth trying to like figure out the absolute perfect decision, um, you know, three months down the road. I think the best thing to do would be to go get it. Because the whole point, the, the what thing they want you to do is get everybody back together, pay them 100%. Nobody has a lapse in pay, payroll. They don't have to put people on unemployment. So that's what I think they want you to do. So I would guess that that's the thing that they're going to be the most forgiving on. And um, yeah, so that's what I think. Uh, Steve Lumbo, uh, but then can we just rehire someone new to replace them if they refuse to come back to work? Probably, yeah, I would guess so. But again, I like, I don't know. Like, this is the thing, like they wrote this bill, it seems like they tried to cover a lot of their bases and it seems like it, it has a lot of things thought out in it, but there's there there because they, it's not like they're going to compare names to names. They're just going to look at a number and a number. So if, if your payroll is if your headcount is at, at the same, if your payroll is at the same, I don't think. Well, actually, you know what? Actually, I don't think that's true because in the in the in the um, in the uh, the wages part, like it it talks about individual. Like the headcount is just like a number. But the wages part talks about individual employees. So that's the part that I think, um, yeah, I think that that's the part where you would maybe get, um, maybe they will compare names of like, did Susan Jones still make $16 an hour or did she make eight or did Susan Jones make zero and now Mary Smith is in her place? Because they're not looking, the, the point of this is not, for you to be able to shuffle the team and find better people now that there's a bunch of people unemployed. The point of this is for uh, whatever name I just, Susan Jones, whatever name I used in the first place, whoever your original employee is, the whole point of this is to keep her employed on your payroll um, and not have her go on unemployment. That's what they're trying to do. Um, so I would guess that because they talk about individual employees on the, on the pay side of it, I bet you that they're going to you're gonna to have to show that this person still made this much, this person still made this much, and you're able to, you can't 
what it, what I'm understanding with the 75% thing is that you can't cut any one employee below 75%. So it's not like you could, I don't think that it's going to be the wages of the whole are above 75%. I think it's going to be every individual person has to stay above 75%. They want those original people employed. They want those original people making 75% at least of their employ of their original pay. And, and I think that's the only way that you're going to be a hundred percent certain on this. So, um, so hopefully that, uh, maybe cleared something up. I don't know. That was, I'm, I'm still confused. It makes, I feel a little bit better about it now, but, but I'm still confused on it. So, so hopefully you guys can, uh, make your best decisions based off of uh, what I just said. But what I just said is different than what a lot of these blogs out there are talking about. Almost all of them are talking about June 30th and they're missing that first paragraph that, and I think the reason they put in that June 30th is as a backstop. And now that they have a date of enactment for the act, I think that's the real date. So don't be somebody who gets caught trying to rehire people by June 30th but really the, the deadline was really April 27th because everybody's, uh, everybody that I've read is going off of this Senate bill and the Senate bill hadn't been passed yet. So some of the language is, is, is because of that. So, um, so I would use April 27th as that, as that deadline in my mind of, of when, uh, when you have to have everybody back on staff making 75% or above each individual person. So uh, hopefully that helped. And uh, like I said, I'm doing a live Q&A at 530 today about like just people's individual situations. If you want to hop on there and ask, but I'm basically going to say the same thing that I just said here. If you have a question about like this unemployment thing, because I, I just don't think that there's like a perfect answer for you. I think there's a lot of different op options and you, you're going to have to like make the one that you think is, is the best uh, for you and your business and your family and all that. So I uh, hope that helped and we'll see you on the next one.